I'd like to ask you, what is your learning attitude? Let's say that you had a very nasty collapse just after takeoff, like this one. Would you think, well, it's just a collapse, shit happens, and move on with your life and your flying career? Or are you eager to learn from this because you realize that if the conditions were a little bit different or the pilot would have responded a little bit different, this may have ended up being a fatal incident. Welcome to Flight Coach. If you're new here, my name is Bas van Duin and it is my mission to help you get more out of your life and your flying career to having less stress and more skills. I believe the difference between a good pilot and a great pilot is made by the ability to reflect on yourself. I think that also goes for the difference between good human beings and great human beings, but now I'm digressing. In this episode, by popular demand, the collapse of my buddy Owen. Well, his gliders collapse actually. Anyway, I will take you through the footage of this incident from different perspectives and we'll see what could have been improved and what was impressive. The two eyes, yeah, I just invented that. So first, I just want you to look at it without my commentary. some information before we look at it again uh, from a slow motion perspective. The wind was coming from the left of the viewing orientation, that, which was the north. And the wind was forecasted to be around eight knots at around the takeoff altitude. And the conditions on takeoff were that the wind was in general coming from the front, so a headwind onto the slope, and sometimes alternating between uh, coming from the left side. This was one of the very first flights for this pilot with this glider. So it's all very new and uh, I can imagine this must have been very challenging conditions to face while not being very familiar with your glider. Now we're going to look at it again in slow motion and try to form your own picture of what happened here. Now you've had some time to think about that. I will walk you through what I'm seeing and what I think that happened. We can see that right after takeoff, the pilot flies into a thermal. We can hear that by the continuous and increasing beeps. Now at this point in time, it appears that the pilot is focusing on getting comfortable and properly into the harness, into the pod to be more precise. We can see the feet and the toes move and the focus appears to be laying there. Maybe at this point, due to a little bit of weight shift, it is possible that the wing was also partially unloaded at the left side. I'm not sure about that, but it is a possibility. Now we see the glider rotating to the left towards the collapsed side, and it appears to be around a 90 degree turn. And a huge dive follows because the glider, the left side of the glider, wants to fly again. Can you imagine what would have happened if this incident would have happened closer to the ground or the pilot did not weight shift and respond to this incident? I hope you see what I mean when I say that this could have ended up being a fatal accident instead of a near miss. Now we have also footage from another perspective from the air. Let's look again at the two side by side in slow motion. Now watch the shadow. He lost altitude fast. Now, what could have been improved in this situation? I like to talk about three levels, which I also already discussed in my previous incident analysis video. I'll leave a link here. And those three levels are the strategy level, the tactics level, and the technique level. Well, at a strategy level, I think what could have been improved is make a better mental picture of what was going on. 
with a forecasted northerly wind, in this case from the left, the wind is blowing over the ridge. So taking off behind or next to that ridge, you can expect to have turbulence. So at this point in time, pilots were actually taking off from two different sites. The earlier mentioned uh, easterly facing site and the northerly facing site. And the wind kept alternating between uh, being favorable for either one of these. The reason uh, the pilot picked the eastward facing site is that that was the general wind direction at that point in time. I think either one of two scenarios was applicable here. Or there was a thermal releasing from the north side of the slope. So that was the slope to the left of the pilot. And it was releasing and the wind was blowing against it. The pilot was actually flying at the lee, the downwind side of the thermal, partially under it. Second scenario is that it also could have been possible that the thermal triggered and got formed on the south side. So that's actually the side that the pilot is flying over during this phase of the flight. The wind still coming from the north is hitting the thermal and creating a turbulent zone just around the place where the pilot is. It's also worth noting that all takeoffs right up until the point of this actual launch from this takeoff went effortlessly and without any signs of severe turbulence. If you want to learn more about scenario thinking, I made a video about that too. I'll link it up here. Now, I think it does not really matter which of these two scenarios is the exact case because they have in common that there is a turbulent zone to be expected right after takeoff and you have to anticipate on that. So be prepared. As soon as you have safe clearance from the ground and you are situated in the pod, it might have been a good idea to turn into wind. So to fly to the left, to make a turn, to start heading towards the core of the thermal, making the period of time you're flying through a turbulent zone as short as possible. On a tactics level, I think the pilot should have had more focus on the circumstances, on the turbulence and the thermal in this case, and not of getting comfortable into the harness. And on the technique level, we can see it very clear uh, at this exact point in time, the pilot appears to be falling through the left because the left side is that side that collapsed and uh, that loses pressure. So it is normal that the pilot initially falls to the left. But what I notice is that in this camera perspective, I would have expected to see the hand of the pilot all the way up near the pulley. But instead, the hand of the pilot is way out of sight. I expect that it was a reflex of the pilot trying to lean into the falling side, because that's quite a normal reflex when you have such a violent collapse. You're falling to the left, and you're trying to get support with the hand that's holding the brake. What you're actually doing when doing that is keeping the brake line on tension and partially preventing that side of the wing to fill, to fill up again. You're actually delaying the restoring of the glider. So just let up that left brake. As soon as you notice that you're falling to the left, let up that hand and then try to recover. Not bring the hand down with you trying to recover because recovery will take longer. Also, the points that I thought were impressive on the way the pilot dealt with this situation. Well, first off, great job on not trying to change your posture. As soon as you get a big disturbance like this one and your glider starts turning, you want to prevent ending up in a twist. That is a thing that happened very impressively here in this video. Pilot did not attempt to sit up straight and retract his legs. If he would have done that, it may have ended up making things a lot worse. Compare it to the angular momentum that this ice skater is creating by changing the body posture from outstretched to getting smaller. That is causing this huge increase in rotation. Of course, when you enter a turbulent and dangerous zone, there's nothing wrong with sitting up straight, but you should not do this in the exact instance when your glider starts deforming and turning. Because when you do it at that point in time, you make things way worse. Once the weight shift was applied, you can see that here, it was applied properly. Note that it took less than two seconds between the first sign of trouble and the pilot applying the correct weight shift. 
Now the camera distorts the perspective a little bit due to the wide field of view, but the pilot is actually sitting on his right cheek, leaning to the right here, helping the glider fill up again. Also quite impressive, the braking of the dive once the course was stabilized. Of course, this is something that has to be done carefully because when the glider starts surging forward, you have to let it do that in order to fill the cells back up again, but you should not let it overshoot or dive too deep. So do you have any recommendations for this pilot in this specific case? Please feel free to share them down below in the comments. And also don't forget to drop me a line to comment on this episode. And if you like what you're seeing here on the channel, maybe consider subscribing. If you have any footage of a near miss, an incident or an accident that you want me to analyze on the channel so others can learn and benefit from that, that would be great. Just reach out to me and we'll get things going. See you next time. See you in the air.